वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस एनकाउंटर वेर ग्रांड मास्टर विदित गुजराती टेक्स ऑन पर हम मकसूद लू विदित हैज हैड क्वाइट अ टफ इवेंट हियर एंड हैज टू बैक टू बैक लॉसेज कैन ही बाउंस बैक एज ही गेट्स रेडी फॉर द गेम अ फैन कम्स इन एंड आस्क फॉर एन ऑटोग्राफ विद इट हैज ऑलवेज बीन वेरी काइंड टू हिज फैंस एंड दिस इज नो डिफरेंट सीन ही साइंस इट इवन बिफोर द गेम वेर ही intends to focus smiles and then gets ready for the battle parham maksudlu enters another gem on the chess board who loves to attack who loves to play complex and crazy games this is a clash of styles and with it has quite a huge plus score against parham in classical chess let's see if parham can make it better because this might be the time for him to strike with it is not in his best form knight comes out to f3 what is with its response going to be is it going to be the super solid d5 yes he plays his pawn up to d5 and parham plays the reti with g3 with it the reason why he fares so well against parham is because parham loves to take risks while with it is positionally very sound so this combination often works out in with its favor because he doesn't have to do too many things to create play he just has to ensure that parham's play does not give him the desired result and that somehow is with its style you know he also does it well against dubov or noderbek and so on bishop e7 you can see how with it is just developing his pieces in pure queen's gambit decline style c4 is on the board and now with it castle so he's ready to go into the catalan if parham goes d4 here but parham plays the move b3 and now with it pushes his pawn to c5 this is an interesting moment in the game because he wants to push his pawn to d4 closing the bishop if it comes to b2 and that's the reason why <coughs> maksudlu goes e3 and he's kind of saying to with it that if you play d4 then i'll take take and it will be like a reversed reversed benoni with it brings his knight out to c6 so all logical play until now with it has 1 hour 26 minutes on the clock parham has 1 hour 14 minutes parham has taken a bit more time on the clock in this kind of well known position now with bishop b2 i think it's time to push your pawn forward yes with it pushes his pawn to d4 a very very important move now closing down the bishop parham takes the pawn and now c takes d4 is the natural reaction here so very ambitious play we have a reversed benoni but black's pawn is on e6 and in order to play e5 it will take some time that's the reason why rook e1 was played to stop the e5 move and now black goes rook e8 and his point is just move the bishop away bishop f8 bishop d6 and try to play e5 when this bishop would be then staring on this solid mass of pawns so parham goes d3 and he wants to develop his knight a5 seems like a logical move because a3 b4 is often on the mind of white but with it goes bishop b4 he attacks the rook and he says that whatever way you defend like knight d2 or rook e2 i'm going to get an e5 and i'm going to centralize and sort of strengthen my center knight comes to d2 and now will with it go e5 yes he does e5 on the board now the downside of this entire operation is the move a3 if black could go a5 successfully and go back with his bishop he has a great position but now either you have to give up the bishop which then after queen d2 doesn't stop b4 or you go back like with it does but still b4 comes in and this is exactly what white wants parham <laughs> wants to expand on the queen side and his plan is to go b4 c5 yes he goes b4 c5 knight c4 knight d2 knight e4 and this is how you generally play in the benoni structure he goes bishop f5 with it now hits the pawn on d3 for with it it's more about central game queen d7 rook d8 try for e4 and so on pawn pushes to c5 creating 
a square for the knight on the c4 square. So bishop has to move away now. So bishop c7 seems like the most logical response. Yes, he does play bishop c7. Now white goes knight to c4. You will see that this is being attacked thrice on e5. It's also being defended thrice. So e5 is a very key point in the position. With it goes a6, just making sure that b5 doesn't come in and he loses the e5 pawn. Queen c2. Maybe this move was played so that he can reroute his knight from d2 to e4. That's his plan and then the d3 pawn doesn't hang. So he defends it with queen c2 and the queen is pretty decently placed there. But queen d7, nice move by Vidit. You can see that Vidit just keeping all his pieces huddled together in the center. The game is shaping up brilliantly. We are, move, we are on move number 18 now and there have been only one pair of pawns that have been traded. Rook AD1 played, just centralizing the rook. And I think with it can now go Bishop G4, which is a nice little move. Putting pressure on this knight, pinning it on, on this diagonal. And I think that's what he would like to play. With it Gujarati thinking, taking his time and he plays Bishop to G4. Now, if you see this knight is pinned, and can get under trouble if the queen also starts to come in. So Parham breaks the pin with rook d2. And now a very useful move is h6. Could be a very nice one to play. Or even rook a d8. But also rook e7 and rook e8 would be nice. With it goes queen f5, which perhaps is the best move in the position. But I think Parham's plan has always been to go knight to h4 here that was his plan to hit the queen and that is exactly what he does he goes knight h4 and he asks with it where do you want your queen to be now queen should go back either to d7 or c8 because that is where it's good and h3 won't be possible because this diagonal is under control no goes to h5 here puts the queen on h5 and now h3 comes in. So Parham is fighting back. He wants space. And that is what he's getting now. Bishop goes back to e6. If Vidit can play bishop d5, he would be happy. And for the time being, the queen also controls the pawn on e5. Parham plays rook e2. He's putting more pressure on the e5 pawn. You will see that there is one, two and three attackers. Also, the threat could well be to take on c6 and then take on e5 that could be an idea but i think with it is ready with his move to meet the bishop on g2 with bishop d5 you will see that both players meeting move for move blow for blow this position is equal right now bishop d5 is such a nice move and now parham sees that his knight perhaps could be rerouted and he goes knight d2 with it comes in has removed his jacket he knows that this is the moment now. The game is getting intense. Both players down to their last 15, 12 to 15 minutes. Bishop takes g2, taken. Now after king g2, the white king does look a bit exposed here. And black can move in with his knight to the cent central square on d5. Looking at these very, very key squares on c3, e3 and f4. So with it goes knight d5, he puts his knight on the center and now how is Parham going to create any play? Because if with it gets this move f6, then puts his queen back on f7, he should be doing very well. Knight comes out to f3 and now with it, if he plays f6, he's doing well. He goes rook d8, also not a bad move. But you know the queen is a little bit running out of squares. For now, if you go g4, there is queen h6. And then the queen comes in. So he plays queen c4. And with it can go now rook f8 perhaps. Just with the idea of f5. It could be an idea here. But the position is getting a bit tough. And he blunders big time. A huge blunder. Because now, if you see... G4 may not be possible just as yet because of knight G4. 
But the queen is now, when it goes to h6 and you attack it with bishop c1, it can't run away. So the queen is lacking squares. Parham takes his time. He has 11 minutes to figure out the winning move. And there's a very, very strong winning move. This last move, knight f6 was not at all a good move by Vidit. Bishop c1, what a move this is. Maybe his idea is bishop g5, take the knight and play g4 when white is completely better. So Vidit stops it with h6, clearly missing Parham's next plan, which is huge, which is huge. And Parham is ready. I think he's seen it. Rook e4, what a move here, what a classic move. Knight e4, he's going to take with the rook and play g4. The queen is trapped. You want to maybe move your pawn, like let's say if with it takes the rook now. He takes on e4 and Parham can simply take back with the rook and the queen is completely trapped on h5. Just think about it. After rook takes e4 and Parham is just making sure that all his analysis is accurate after all. He sacrificed an exchange and now the big tragedy for Vidit is that his f-pawn doesn't move. Otherwise he would have played it and just moved his queen. But the pawn is pinned and g4 is unstoppable. Look at Vidit there. He has been outplayed here. He has been trapped. These two moves, knight f6 and h6 have led him to getting his queen trapped. There's no way out of it. It is absolutely depressing for Vidit. He has had two losses in this event back to back and this will be his third loss. He did play again a very good game. Very nice but at the key moment he made a mistake and Parham latched onto it. There are no more moves left here to avoid the loss of material for Vidit. And this is quite a tough period. I don't remember the last time Vidit must have lost three classical games. The, there is a lot of pressure related to the candidates, of course, but of also the players and the opposition is just so strong. Parham Maksudlu, one of the best in the world, G5 played. The queen is kind of trapped and now white will push his pawn to G4. And the queen is completely boxed in. He has to give up the queen. He will get two knights in return. So materially, actually, black is doing pretty okay. Just think about it. Queen h4, knight h4, g h4. He would have a, a rook and a knight for a queen, which is fine. But on the other hand, there is literally no counterplay because now the h6 pawn is falling. And then f4 can be played at the right time. There are so many good moves that can be played. Bishop g5 to win more material. And I think there is no more play left. With it resigns. Parham Maksudlu scores an important win. Keeping the race for the title alive. He's on 4.5 out of 7. Just half a point behind Nodirbek. With it takes his stuff and leaves. This is a very difficult event for him right before the candidates. But maybe what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We hope for that. For now, Parham Maksudlu tricks with it Gujarati in this game and plays a very nice encounter.